In today's series, Tips on Selling Your Home, we're going to be talking about selling FISBO or selling for sale by owner. So you put up a for sale by owner FISBO sign on your house. You are opening yourself up to some harmless situations, but at the same time, you are also opening up the door to some unexpected situations that are very important for you to know. And that's exactly what we want to be talking about today. But before we go there, I just want to remind you that selling a house has three major categories. You have the preparation stage, you have the listing and marketing stage, and then you have the closing stage. In each of these stages, there's a lot of preparations and a lot of items that go in it. But if you want more details about these specific ones, you can check out a video I did on how to get a house ready to sell in 35 days. You can watch that later. But let's get into the what are you not prepared for and need to be prepared for. So the first thing that's gonna happen is that you're gonna start receiving calls and isn't that the whole point? You put the house on the market because you want people to call you, but you want buyers to call you. So here's what's gonna happen. The first group of people that are going to call you are going to be real estate agents. And these real estate agents basically want to help you sell your house. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's many of them are very good. They have very good intentions and they have your best interest at heart. And that's really what they wanna do. They want to help you sell your house. The next group of people are gonna be also real estate agents, but these are gonna be a little bit different. They're going to be the ones who just want to dip into the commission. So they wanna get your listing. Most likely you're never gonna hear from them during the listing period. And you can expect them to be more like discount brokers. All right, the next group of people you can expect calling you are going to be wholesalers. And what their main idea and goal is to buy your property the cheapest possible way and have the contract sold to an end buyer. So basically they have no skin in the game. They're negotiating the numbers with you and then they take the contract of sale that they have with you and they sell it to another buyer. So for example purposes, let's say they made a deal at 600 with you and I'm just taking an average number and then they sell the contract to an end buyer for let's say 620. So they make 20,000, they didn't spend any money. Of course they did the legwork and everything, but that's really what happens. The next group of people that you will find calling you are investors and their main goal is to buy the property as cheap as possible. And then they either keep it and rent it out. So they'll fix it and they'll flip it. Most of the times that happens if your property is in need of repair, so they would want to flip it. If it's in a moving condition, I'm not saying it has to be like completely mint and fully just renovated, but if it's in livable condition and they can just put a tenant in there, that's really what they want to do. Then you're going to start getting the more direct calls, but they're going to be coming from realtors as well except these would be representing buyers. So they will introduce themselves as the buyer's agent. They will say, I have a buyer who's interested in your property. Can I come and show the property? But here's the thing. They will not show your house to their buyer unless you sign uh, an agreement of a compensation fee. And you really, even if you're selling for sale by owner, you really should consider offering real estate fees and commissions to a buyer's agent. These buyers are relying on the realtors to find them properties. You really want to consider and disqualify this kind of situation. Now, sometimes you will get fake buyer agents calls who are saying, well, I have a buyer for your house. Can I come and preview the property? So I just ask them a little bit more detailed questions, like more direct about what kind of a buyers do you have? What kind of a property they're looking for? And look, sometimes I do preview properties for my clients, especially if they have very busy schedules, are very limited in time, and I know what they are looking for. I would go and preview the property for them because 
I can do that during times that they're not available. And if I see that this house is totally not something that they're looking for, I'm just gonna let them know, look, this house is not for you. Let's just pass on it and go somewhere else. So do consider to work with buyers, agents. The next set of calls that you are going to receive are actually from buyers. And this is why you decided to sell Fisbo in the first place. The only problem with this is that you don't really know what these buyers are all about. You want to have buyers in the door who are A, qualified to buy your house. And that means they got the pre-approval, it's recent, they, everything is up to par with their qualifications, with their jobs, with their tax returns, W-2s, all of these things that go into the pre-approval. Also, I have a video about that, you can check that. And you want to ask some questions before you let these people in the door. You know what kind of a house they're looking for because you wanna kind of gauge and see if the house that you have for sale is even something that is similar to what they are looking for. Otherwise, you're just gonna be spending a lot of time cleaning up and preparing the house and running around and making yourself available and in, into getting these people the appointment that's coming in and showing them the house when in reality, maybe they can't even afford to buy your house or they're not even ready and they just in the beginning stages of their process, maybe they're not pre-approved and they don't even know when they're going to be buying. Now, if you do find yourself that you have a really well-qualified buyer, make sure that you are looking and digging into the offer specifically in checking the terms, looking at the pre-qualifications and pre-approvals, checking on the finances, making sure that this buyer did not put anything crazy in the terms there. So you, you wanna make sure that they put money in escrow. You wanna make sure that the due diligence period is set to a specific timeline. And if I were you, I would not even have the house off the market until all the due diligence period is over and then the contract is fully executed, which means it has been signed by the buyer, a deposit into escrow was made, and it's also signed by you. And now you can rest assured that the property has been sold. Not specifically, but the property is in the process of being sold. So be careful of terms, be careful of escrow. Here's another warning for you. You might come across a buyer who's gonna give you what looks like an amazing offer, a great price, and then they'll do the home inspection and gonna start to try to ripping you off negotiating items and asking you to give them credits or reduce the price by tens of thousands of dollars. So this is something that a for sale by owner, when you're selling for sale by owner, you may not no, that's something that can happen. So that you take all of these things into consideration. And in order to protect yourself from all of these things, that's why we have what we call an offer to purchase where all the terms and periods, finances, our contingencies are going there. Speaking of contingencies, be very careful when you are reviewing all the offers that you are getting and i'm saying all the offers because we are still in the hot market and there's a very good chance that you will be getting multiple offers and multiple offers does not necessarily mean that you're going to have 10. multiple offers could be two or three so understanding the terms and the contingencies you want to be very careful there's a lot of people right now that are buying but they're money is attached to the sale of their home. So they have a contingency, which is a sale contingency. So when you're looking at all of these offers, make sure that you check each one and see, is this offer contingent upon sale of the current home that they live in? Or maybe this buyer has nothing to sell and they're currently renting. These are very important things to look into. When they're planning to do the inspection, are the terms stating as a sale and the inspection is for information purposes only. There's a lot that goes into these terms. 
so you really need to pay close attention so these are the things that you should be very careful when you're selling FISBO and when you're dealing with making the appointments answering all the phone calls vetting who's who scheduling everything getting the house in order making the showings all over different days different times of day so that's one thing and you may very well be okay with that and that's great and that's fine but let's talk about the pricing and most likely you are planning if not already to market your property on zillow and that is great the only problem with zillow it has a few problems we have a problem with their zestimate be very careful because the zestimate may very well work against you because buyers and realtors in the same time when they are utilizing when a house is listed with a listing agent they by default already understand that the house is priced as per market condition and the way the market is on zillow unfortunately now pricing a house is very hyper local you can have the same house situated on one side of the highway in the same borough and then another house just like that on the other side of the borough and the price between the two even though they're in the same zip code may be very different so with zillow they do not have the capability of being hyper local so with zillow what they do is they take a combined zip code and create an average and just hit it with a zestimate a lot of times the zestimate can be higher than what the actual value is but that's not going to hurt you what's going to hurt you is if the zestimate is lower than what the market value of your house is and if a buyer relies to find your property on zillow for instance and let's say you're asking 750,000 for your house and the zestimate shows 720 the buyer's not going to offer you 7 50, they're going to look at it and say, the estimate says this, so that's the right price for the house. So in this case scenario, and I hate to tell you this because I don't really like Zillow, but I want you to know that in order for your estimate to be more aligned with the real value of the house, what you have to do if you're planning to market your property on Zillow is to go in there and request an adjustment and update on your market value for your specific house you're gonna have to claim your house there but that's gonna come with some annoyance too because from that point on you're gonna start getting messages and emails and texts from zillow did you sell your house yet do you want an agent to help you sell your house and it's going to be a consistent so while you're in the process of selling your house if you have to deal with all these people and all these inquiries that might be very overwhelming to you but it's doable if that's something that you want to do. The other thing with Zillow that is very important for you to know is that a while ago, what Zillow did was they separated all the listings that shows up that are listed with a listing agent, with a broker, with a realtor and everything else. So they call it other. So as a for sale by owner, you will fall under that category. Now, if a buyer who's shopping does not know or does not see if they don't poke around and they see that there's another listing type that's being that they can find on zillow which is all the for sale by owners then they're never going to come across your house so at this point what's happening let's say if you would have had 50 and that's a real number for today's number even more sometimes but I, i'm minimizing if you have 50 showings on your house when you listed with a real estate broker versus when you listed by yourself as a for sale by owner on Zillow and you are automatically listed under that category of other, you're losing a lot of buyers who have no idea to find you there. So what's going to happen here, instead of 50 showings, you will have maybe 10 and we all know that a man drives price. So the more offers you have, the better shot you're gonna have the terms that you want, the closing date that you want, the money that you want. And I like to call it, and you're always going to be in the driver's seat. So 
something to consider when you are selling for sale by owner. I suggest that you look at other videos that I have on tips on selling your house on my channel. Consider subscribing, ask a question, comment, like this video if this was helpful to you, and I will see you next time.